When it comes to domain-driven design, there is basically one book that everybody should read, which is the seminal DDD book by Eric Evans. And over the course of this week, you're going to hear me mention many of these names quite a lot. So let's take a moment to explain what these concepts mean and get everybody on the same page. Domains are the broad business areas in your organization, such as order management. And the subdomains are a level down from that. In the order management domain, your subdomains may be order processing, payment processing, shipping, and so on. Modeling a domain involves using a ubiquitous language, which is a shared vocabulary used by both the developers and the domain experts. And the goal is to eliminate misunderstandings and ambiguities to ensure clear and concise communication. And the ubiquitous language is used to describe the entities in the domain, which are the significant business concepts such as a customer or an order. And these entities have unique identifiers such as an order ID, and they come with their own set of attributes and behaviors. It's important to note that an entity might exist in different domains, but it can have very different attributes and behaviors. Take a product, for example. It might appear in the inventory management domain, the order management domain, as well as the marketing domain. It will always have a product ID and a name. And in the inventory management domain, we might also need to know the quantity we have in stock and in which warehouse and who's the supplier. In the order management domain, we need to know its price, what order it was sold in, and in what quantity. And in the marketing domain, we need to know the marketing campaign it was in, whether it was a featured product, and what were the customer reviews. So depending on the domain, the product entity can have a very different meaning. And to make sure that something like a product has a consistent meaning within a particular context, we literally put a boundary around each of these domains and we call this boundary context, which is a boundary within which the concepts and terminologies and rules are consistent and they are isolated from other boundary contexts. A boundary context would encapsulate a particular domain or subdomain, and it helps us manage complexity by breaking down a large system into smaller and more manageable parts. And it allows different models of looking at the world from interfering with each other. But these boundary contexts can't always live in isolation. Oftentimes, they need to talk to one another, and we need to understand the relationships between these boundary contexts and the power dynamic that exists between them. Because, as Conway's law says, organizations are bound to produce designs that are copies of its communication structures, not its org chart, but its communication structures, which is basically how the different teams interact with each other. So by understanding the communication patterns between our boundary contexts, we can also understand the relationships between the teams and any dependencies that we need to factor in. And the context maps let us visualize the relationship between boundary contexts and to model how they should interact with each other. It has a number of patterns for managing these interactions between boundary contexts. And one of the really popular patterns is the anti-corruption layer which translates entities from another external boundary context into an internal one. And it protects our core domain logic from changes from upstream and reduces the coupling between these two boundary contexts to just a single layer and minimizes the blast radius of any unwanted changes from the upstream system. So that's a lot of different ideas. Don't worry, we will explain in more detail later on. But right now, I just wanted to give you a high level introduction to these concepts. So lots of things to cover this week and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you do, why not check out these other videos and learn more about serverless development.